Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. Tonight, we're going to be discussing the sun and the fact that it triggers massive earthquakes. In the last five years, many studies have come together, leading us in a closer and closer direction to predicting major earthquakes and when they occur. And as early as 2015, Ben Davidson and suspicious observers as a citizen scientist group as a whole were noticing the connection. Now what you're looking at here is an early synopsis of that connection. That study suggests the sun triggers massive earthquakes. And these early findings have to do with the correlation between coronal holes and major quakes. Now, before we get on with the video and the data that shows that coronal holes are associated with 29 out of 19 out of the last 29 major quakes, I also want to bring your attention to the solar polar fields. There is also a correlation with the solar polar field reversal and major quakes. You can see here on these flexure points, major quakes either exactly on or directly after the solar polar reversals. Positive or negative, it doesn't matter where they occur, they're on a major flexure point each time. So that means we have coronal holes and the solar polar field. Now, these are all magnetic fields. And in case you didn't know, Magnetic fields, yes, wait for it. You can't have magnetism without electricity. You can't have electrical currents in space without magnetism. And that leads us to the Birkeland current. Now, according to Wikipedia, a Birkeland current is a set of currents that flow along geomagnetic field lines connecting the Earth's magnetosphere to the Earth's high-latitude ionosphere. According to Diamond and others, these currents are prevalent throughout space. And we can even see their spiral nature, uh, even as hypothetically proposed by Birkeland. Now, the currents were predicted in 1908 by the Norwegian explorer and physicist Kristen Birkeland, okay, who undertook expeditions to the Arctic Circle to study the aurora. Now, what you're looking at is Antarctica. And the reason I'm showing you that is because there's also an aurora on the other pole. It's like a dipole. And I'm also showing you Jupiter with the same aurora, the same Birkeland current. Not the same Birkeland current, but the one that's attaching Jupiter to the sun. This Birkeland current attaches the Earth to the sun and so on and so forth. Sorry about that. So the current comes in and out and in and out through a spiraling sheet first described over 110 years ago corroborated by all the fancy things we're looking at in space we can see these currents shooting throughout the universe and we also know they're shooting out of all the planets mercury mars venus jupiter earth we've seen this aurora these currents now let's get back to the data. Coronal holes cause earthquakes. Now what coronal holes are, are gigantic holes in the sun where strange waves, interplanetary magnetic fields, and modulation of the solar wind and current sheet occur, which means it dumps more energy into the sheet, into our planet. And as that energy dumps into the planet, earthquakes occur. Because these Birkeland currents are directly connected to the telluric currents, which flow through the crust, the mantle, and so on. And a major influx of energy, according to science, equals a major boom. And fasten your seatbelts and listen to what Ben Davidson has to say years ago, back in 2014. Are you picking it up? We're putting it down. On February 27th, 2015, we saw another set of coronal holes face Earth. 
another earthquake watch posted, and another uptick in earthquakes let loose. For those new to the program, we've been seeing this for a while, trackable on a daily basis. 19 of the top 29 earthquakes of the SDO satellite era have had corona holes face Earth in their time of occurrence. We normally track the ebb and flow of six magnitude earthquakes day to day using coronal holes. Included in the earthquakes having coronal holes facing Earth is the five largest events of the SDO era. 9.0 in Japan on March 11, 2011. Two eight-pointers struck Sumatra April 11, 2012. Solomon Islands rang out February 6, 2013, and April 2, 2014 witnessed an 8.2 in Chile. The southern portion is less visible but actually showed some strong force. So what's going on here? Basics on coronal holes is that they emit stronger solar wind than the areas around them. These particles catch up to the slower particles out ahead and bunches them up in a density wave that acts much like a CME shock wave and can indeed produce geomagnetic storms at Earth. The high speed streams can last hours to days. Coronal holes are also areas where alphan waves are found, which are proven to transfer energy to Earth's magnetic systems far more efficiently than their surrounding areas. We have seen multiple studies on field variations, ionosphere disruptions, ground currents, and global electric circuit activity before earthquakes, and given that the interplanetary magnetic fields only connect back to the sun at the coronal holes, acting like a wire connecting the electrical bodies, this pattern of coronal hole earthquake triggering now has a potential mechanism coming into focus. Since the year 2001, more than 80% of the magnitude 8 earthquakes have had coronal holes facing Earth. Hundreds of observers are actively participating in the prediction process. Trust me, nothing feels better than to tell your coworkers or boss or buddy that a big quake is coming, and then it happens.